All right, welcome to Door Dancy, the only podcast we can hear all latest in television and entertainment news from the past year. But too many hosts with exactly the same opinions. I'm one of those hosts, David Allen, and another one is. Yeah, I'm Brett. We're third one is. Kyle Bridger. I would say that I am pre COVID 2020 mm-hmm. okay. to John's vaccine oh, no. 2020. Oh, no. To Dave's pandemic 2020. <sighs> dun, dun, dun. The, the worst of the three, that's for sure, as always. What a year 2020 has been, and we're winding it down tonight. Hopefully, better things ahead. But there was still a full year, you know, despite the pandemic, of pop culture, movies, television shows. And we're going to talk about them tonight. We're going to reveal what the listeners picked as their favorite movies, television shows, and pop culture moments from the past year. Been a tradition since 2013. We've done an online survey. This year, we had four categories people could vote in. You could pick as many different things in each category as you want. Plus, there was an other option, so anyone could put in any movie or show that we didn't put on the list. We picked about 20, 25 shows per category, but again, anyone could put anything they wanted up. There's a Google Form survey. The listeners voted. We got some help from some subreddits, sample size, movie, TV subreddits. So we got a pretty good list here of what the people are saying. Got to listen to the votes. Very important. All votes are counted and we tallied them up. We have the winners. Are we we the electoral college? Do we have final say? We'll see. Over these results? I I know these results. John kind of knows these results because he has the images. He's directing the show live on Twitch tonight. There's some of them I'm not agreeing with. I'll tell you right now. There are some weird, weird, weird choices. But that's what the people want. That's what the people get. All right. Uh, So here we go. What do you guys want to say? Let's start off with movies. You want to start off with movies tonight? Yeah. Too bad because that's where we're starting. That's where we're starting. We're going to start off with movies to give you an idea of some past winners. 2017, Get Out. 2018, Avengers Infinity War. Last year, Avengers Endgame. Superheroes are usually, you know, a a top one in this category, but no superhero movies this year. So what is going to happen? What's going to happen? Let's start off. Number three. We talked about it pretty recently. Uh, It's 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 a strange one. It's KFC and Lifetime's A Recipe for Seduction. No, you're not. (laughs) I just pulled your leg. I'm pulling your leg. Oh, my God. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? I was about to burn my computer. (laughs) No, no. (laughs) Better luck next year, Mario Lopez, maybe maybe at the Golden Globes, we'll see. But, now the real number three uh, came out right before the shutdown. It was kind of a box office hit before it went to VOD. The Invisible Man. Mm. The Invisible Man starring Elizabeth Moss, number three on the movie list for this year. Either of you guys check out Invisible Man. No, no. I did not, no. But it has a guy from Bly Manor in it, right? Too? Uh, I believe so. I believe so. I yeah. uh, I saw it. I saw it at home. I didn't see it in a theater. So I don't know if that it completely affected my viewing experience. People were going wild about this, you know, when it was coming out. It was, I mean, it did really well at the box office. People were pumped up for it. And I don't know if I missed out on that watching it at home because my expe- expectations were high and it kind of didn't really hit for me. It was it was good. I don't know. Everyone. Maybe it was you had to be in the theater to, be there, man. to get the experience, yeah. man. But yeah, I mean, next to you, is it really empty? Oh, there <laughs> you go. Um, bubbles in the chat. I was vaguely interested in watching this, not because I thought it would be good per se, just curious about the hype. Yeah. Yeah, I was I was honestly curious too about this. After seeing the trailer, it looks I'm going to say it looks like kind of a dumb premise. But Yeah, I mean, it's hard. I mean, obviously the invisible man, it's like And watching it, I was very frustrated with it at many points, especially with the protagonist of the film. I can't go into specific details because it'd be huge spoilers about the film, but I was left with a lot of logic questions with, Mm. wait a minute, how could that be if this Mm. is that and this is that? It's like, uh, if you want those things, you go to Letterboxd. I wrote a spoiler review there uh, at Eastwood McFly there. You can see what I'm specifically talking about. But this film was a hit. There's going to be a possible Invisible Woman spinoff film. There's also an, enti- an untitled sequel in development. So we're well, going to get the... the Queen song, Invisible Man. I, I, not that I'm aware of, maybe. 
Wait, so there is an untitled project in the works. Untitled sequel Relay. related to The Invisible Man, and then I guess there's an Invisible Woman spinoff. I think those are two separate okay. projects right now being developed. Invisible Man Too Visible. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> and he's actually just there. He's come back to life. Everyone else is invisible. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just him. It's like, where is everybody? It's just yeah. me. Uh, all right, well... That's Invisible Man, number three on the list. Let's now talk about number two on the list. And this one we discussed, episode 316, Borat, subsequent movie film. The surprise sequel we didn't know about until like a month before the premiere. We all saw Borat, subsequent movie film. What do you think of this pick there, John? Uh, yeah, I think it's in the right spot. I mean, uh, how many other films were out this year? I I, I thought it was pretty good for the most part. I, I, I think... Uh, some people may have more of a connection to it, might have liked it a little bit higher, but yeah, I don't have any problems with where it is. Okay, okay. Uh, Kyle, you like the you like yeah. the pick? Well, I mean, for the year that we had, uh, it's a it's a pretty good pick. I mean, it would have been in in my top pretty much for the year because I didn't see that many films <laughs> this yeah. year in general, and nothing really wowed me this year. So, um, I would say that it's uh, above average film. Uh, it was funny. Um. But, uh, you know, it's nothing like the original, and how can we expect it to be? But uh, I, uh, I did enjoy it. I did enjoy watching it. I thought it was very funny. I thought um, it was kind of a, a coming out for the, the actress there who did a great job uh, as well. And we got one of, I think, one of the biggest pop culture yeah. moments of the year from it. Uh, with, with Rudy. Rudy Judy, Rudy, yeah. Doing with whatever he was doing. What a Check month the he mic. had. What I'm a just month he sure had in November fine. to December of 2020. I mean, I yeah, I mean, yeah, the, the, the incident made the news. Uh, there was a bunch of awards buzz already for, as, as you mentioned, Maria Bakalova, uh, the actress that played uh, Borat's daughter here. Definitely could see a Golden Globe nomination. I mean, Sasha Baron Cohen won a Golden Globe back in the day for the original Borat. Mm. I could easily see... Uh, Maria. I would love it if she was Oscar nominated. That would be It's possible. The original was nominated man. for screenplay. It could it could make the cut. Um I will say though that the Kazakh American Association is requesting that the film that that the Oscars, Golden Globes, the DGA Awards and the BAFTAs bar the film from awards consideration. They don't want the film nominated. And I guess the thing is what any publicity is good publicity for the awards campaign here. <laughs> like, right? But didn't they just steal the slogan? Well, that was the They're K- back and Kazakh forth here. Tourism Board. This is the Kazakh American Association. Everyone needs to get on the same page here. What? <laughs> what is the... De- what? Is this like the, the Kazakhstan Embassy? Who is this? I don't know. I don't know. This uh, sounds absurd. They're not happy. They don't think it's very you know, nice. That's you can't for sure. be... You can't use it in your... T- tourism slogan and then be angry yeah enough get off enough. off with you but yeah uh yeah it was never gonna live up to the original no sequel no comedy sequel i think ever has but it was still a, a, a fun movie it had some had some good moments that's all i can ask for it was a surprise we didn't know it was coming came out of nowhere yeah. boom not bad mm-hmm. all right we got our number one film here and before i reveal it i want to get some predictions kyle what do you think is the number one film on the board that the listeners voted for? Uh, I got to be honest. I I really have no idea. It's so hard to gauge what people would be into considering the slate of movies mm. that we're working with here. Um, maybe The Five Bloods. Mm. Maybe. Maybe. It was very popular when it came out. But it's like that Netflix thing. It's like soaring and then it just falls, crashes. You don't hear anything about it. Uh, I don't know. Could be the old guard that was popular for a short time, mm-hmm. then that crashed too. I don't know. All right, I'll, know, I'll tell you. It's a film that was on a streaming service. It was discussed in episode three hundred one on the podcast. I think we all really liked it. Actually, I think forty percent of the voters picked it. Uh, it's hard to say because everyone gets multiple choices, but mm-hmm. it's on I think forty percent of the ballots. Palm Springs. Okay. There that's a that's a good choice. I love that choice. That's a, looking at the slate of films we have here. That would have been my choice too. Okay. There you go. Um, all right. So that's that's kind of mine for the year. And I could see how it would have a well-rounded audience. I mean, it's probably one of the best comedies of the year. 
Yeah, it was unique, creative. Um, one of the first big movies to go to streaming, you know, at the beginning of the whole pandemic. Uh, and I think it is also my favorite of the year. Uh, according to Letterboxd, mm-hmm. I only rated uh, Hamilton higher on the list. And Hamilton, obviously, was like a s- videotape stage recording from like 2016. So it's like, yeah, I can't really yeah. compare those apples and oranges. But mm-hmm. Palm Springs, uh, I-, I enjoyed it. John, what I did you think? It. I enjoyed it, and I, I think it's cool that it's kind of a little bit of a, a divergence from the normal Lonely Island um, uh, content that you're getting. So I, I look forward to seeing a bit more out of them, um, possibly in that range. But I think it's kind of cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was definitely not the the pop star hot rod version of of a movie, but it was like a little bit Groundhog's Day, a little rom com. Mm-hmm. I, I think it worked quite well. Um, all right, those were our top three movies voted on. I'll tell you the ones that just missed the cut, and then we'll share some of our favorites. Um, let's see here. The ones that just missed the cut of the top three. I'm thinking of Ending Things, Tenant, and The Trial mm. of the Chicago 7. Mm. Uh, they, they didn't make the cut. Speaking of Tenant, though, I will say Reddit revealed it was the most discussed film on the movie's subreddit of all films what, this year. What Tenet. movie? The- Oh, tenant. And I think it was because there because, was yeah, well, yeah. an article every week posted that was delayed uh. two weeks. So it's like, of course, yeah. they got the bump all the time. On that list, Borat was number four. Invisible Man was number ten on that Reddit list. Okay. Um, it's a shame that I haven't gotten to see Tenant yet. Yeah. I really would have. At this point, it's just so hyped up. It's like, how can it live up to any expectations of anything um, with just all the whirlwind around it? But uh, I don't know. Yeah. Um, Let's see some the I'm going to say some multiple write ins. These are some films because we picked only 20, 25 films. So I I like to put the ones that got multiple write ins in because it's like, oh, that shows multiple people are choosing, not just Mm -hmm. these single votes. Uh, Multiple write ins went for Enola Holmes, Boys State, First Cow, The Gentleman. There's also one vote for Cats, which I I wanted to strike that off the record. Get that off Must of here. What are you doing? A joke. Uh, good, bad, and watchable podcast. Yeah, guys, they're messing maybe. with us here. <laughs> um, meanwhile, there were some films that got zero votes. The ones we picked out, their names were there. Nobody even selected them. <laughs> These are some zero <laughs> vote getters. Uh, Hoobie Halloween, Mulan, The New Mutants, The Rental. Uh, those are some zero vote getters there. Wow. Sounds well, I, it was a tough year for film, man. It was a tough, tough yeah, one. Yeah, you would have thought, though, some superhero fan would have even picked New Mutants or yeah. somebody would pick Mulan because it's yeah. Mulan. Yeah, I was surprised here, even though, it, yeah, just the fact that it is Mulan, you would expect somebody would have liked that. I don't know. Yeah. What, what about you guys, though? Any any favorites stand out uh, you want to you wanna mention here, John? Any favorite movies of the year? Um, Eurovision? I, uh, yeah. <laughs> the... Uh, Trial of the Chicago, uh, 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 what was it? I want to say seven. I don't, yep. I don't think it's right. Oh, it mm-hmm. is seven. That was that was a, uh, classified as a movie, right? Even though it was streaming, yeah, right? It was a movie. Yeah. yeah. I I enjoyed that one. I think that um, Palm Spring and Borat might have been my top three uh, personally. So uh, two out of three got up there. So I'm I'm good with that. Yeah, I had I had those three on my favorites list. I also had uh, Host, which was that Shutter movie. I think I did a quick check on, and then Boy State, which. It was a documentary mm. we talked about. Kyle, any mm. any movies you want to shout out? Yeah, Boy State was very, very good. I'm glad somebody wrote that in. Um, I did like The Trial of Chicago 7 as well. Uh, and my top is for sure Palm Springs of the year. I just think it's... I mean, I, to be fair, I haven't seen that many films this year just because of the state of things. Um, but to me, that was uh, the best one. And I, I will say there's a film on here that I was kind of disappointed with. Mm. Which one? Uh, I thought I wanted the King of Staten Island to be mm. a lot better than it was, but it was just supremely average. All right. Well, we're going to move into TV. And this year, it's a little different. Uh, normally, we just have one category. Last year, we did something different. We split it into two. We did a new TV series and an overall TV series. Some new shows were allowed to compete in overall. But this year, I made a rule. We have three categories. You only can appear in, in each one once. We have a returning TV show, a new series that premiered in 2020, and a mini series of the year. So we have three TV categories. We're going to start off with returning TV shows. Um, so in the past, some past winners, Stranger Things won in 2016 and 2017. It was The Good Place in 2018, and then last year, Chernobyl 
one for TV shows. Mm. All right. Uh, before I get started, let's let's hear some ideas, Kyle. Where do you think this is going to go? Any any ideas of what's going to be in the top three for TV shows? Uh, the Boys is pretty popular. I could see that being in the top three. Um, the Mandalorian, I could see being in the top three. Just Star Wars. Uh, um, and sh- I could see Schitt's Creek being in the top three as well as the top comedy. I think, uh, I mean, every you look at... Uh, just like Christmas gifts, you see like all these things for Shit's Creek, like ugly sweaters, all this merchandise. And any sweet for all it. any sweet. Yeah, yeah. I, I will. So s- those would be my top three, I think. Uh, uh, for that I think that the people mm-hmm. chose. I will say I'm not going to give too much away. Two of those are correct. That's all I'm going to say. Our third pick is something you didn't say, but I know it's in one of your top shows of the year. And it's Better Call Saul. Number three on the list for TV shows in the returning category. Good, 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 good. Glad it's getting some love. I mean, it's consistently looked over at the Emmys. Mm -hmm. um, And it's 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 yet to win an Emmy. It's yet to win an Emmy, which is insane. It's crazy. It's just taken for granted. Yeah, Uh, It comes around when it comes around. Even I forget about it. And then when I watch it, I'm like, it's so well done and there's nothing i wouldn't say there's anything flashy about it it's just very very it's well consistent. done television it's, it's just what it yeah. needs to be yeah mm-hmm. yeah i think every year it's just getting better and better it's separating itself so much from breaking bad it's i saw for this year there as of this recording over 10 different top 10 placements from all these news outlets including a number one spot from rolling stone from entertainment weekly it's it's topping all these best of the year list um and as you mentioned getting less and less emmy love i mean even no nomination we've always talked about it for ray seahorn this year bob odenkirk didn't even make the cut it's mm. i don't know what's going on there uh we have one more season left one final season has been announced i, I don't know i mean could we get something with like breaking bad they split that season that final mm. season over over two years i don't know what we're gonna do but uh john you gotta be are you excited for the final season, but also sad because it is going to be the final season? I'm I'm excited. I I I am going to be sad when it's done, but right now I'm excited. I I can't wait to see how they tie that future. You know the black the flash the flash forwards. Yeah. How they tie that up? Uh, I can't wait to see. Um, obviously uh, we left off with Jimmy kind of turning a corner, but now we get to see where. You know where 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 uh, uh, Saul starts to where he is in Breaking Bad, which obviously there's some gap there. So yeah. I, I don't know. I'm I'm excited for it. I can't wait. Yeah. Oh man, I, I'm I'm excited for it. I can't wait for that show to return. It's one of my favorite shows. Uh, our second show, though, I mean, I, I will say earlier this year, Jimmy McGill won our favorite TV character bracket. He was our top TV character on television currently. He was up against. Baby Yoda from The Mandalorian, and it's Baby Yoda's revenge here. He's he's overtaken <laughs> Jimmy because the number two show on the list, The Mandalorian. Oh, man. The Mandalorian is here. It got second last year in new shows, and now it's second in returning shows. Isn't it still airing? It's still going right now. It's It's got the recency bump mm. going on right now as voting's uh. happening. And I will still mention this last year. I think we had it on the list last year. Yeah. And everything I heard was like up and down, up and down, up and down. So I don't know how this year is going. It seems like from what I'm hearing, it's going uh, well. But I I don't know. I just can't. I feel like I'm just going to have Star Wars overload with this uh, Disney announcement <laughs> recently. But Yeah, they did. They did announce quite a bit of new content. Uh, we could have our own star wars category next year because disney plus announced Mm. 10 new star wars series including the obi-wan kenobi series with the return of hayden christensen as vader uh or i guess anakin i don't know if he's become vader at that point in the series uh there's the lando spinoff there is a rogue one prequel series called andor it's just so much star wars that's going to be coming to disney plus I will say I started season one of The Mandalorian recently. I'm, I'm like halfway through. And yeah. I'll say, I said, uh, it, it's fine. It, it, it's, it's good, but I don't know the hype yet. I don't get the hype. It's enjoyable, it's, but it's not really reinventing anything. To me, every episode is, 
it's a weekly Star Wars mission. I think you could almost watch each episode on its own as its own little thing, because so far, at least in the first five or six episodes, it's, all right, uh, the Mandalorian stops off at some planet. There's an issue. Do, 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 do. We solve the issue. He flies off. Next week, he gets to a planet. There's an issue. <laughs> it's just like... It's almost like bottle episodes. Yeah, it's like every episode. It's like, oh, here's we're meeting three new characters, and now they're gonna interact, and what's gonna happen? And I'm just waiting for what's like. I know the very basic. This is the show. This is what the show is. But also, where's the show going? And I have no idea. And I've seen five or six episodes. Yeah, and I was, I mean, this is kind of outside of the Mandalorian, but just in the the news that Disney posted uh, overall, it's like. You can't have J.J. Abrams style Star Wars stuff with 8,000 of these shows. I mean, that's what you're going to get in these shows. It's like, all right, green screen, zoom in into, all right, now we're in Bleeblorg's <laughs> home and he's talking to Stormtrooper 1. You know what I mean? I think you just so spoiled uh, Baby Yoda's real name, Bleeblorb. <laughs> yeah. They did announce his real name. I'll keep it. I'll, it's spoiler. <laughs> I'm just saying it then becomes like this, these uh, <laughs> internal, like inside uh, interior kind of um, settings that they could really be anywhere. They could be put them in the local hotel, you know, and that's where they are. So uh, it starts to stray from the Star Wars that I love, which is a lot of shoot them up, space flight, all that stuff and just does like your basic, you know, episodic stuff. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, again, I, I don't want to say like I'm, I'm talking bad about it. I'm just saying it's fine. I just don't quite get the hype of how mm. everyone's going nuts over this thing. I just I just don't mm. get that part. Um, but all right. One more show to talk about. This show beat it by just about one vote here. That's why these votes matter. It really matters, guys. And the number one show of the year for 2020 returning show, The Boys. Yeah. I don't know. Did we have a dual redundancy bump? We did cover this show like five <laughs> times. We we did three <laughs> times for season one in our catch up series in August. We did it twice for season two. I don't know. Maybe it's just our our listeners <laughs> liked all of our content. And they're just oh, I know the boys. I know that. No, I but, think it's yeah. a good show. Yeah. Oh <laughs> come on! You can't give us any credit, John. Come on. Five percent. Five percent. We helped. We helped educate the people yes. so they can make their own. Uh, 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 wise decisions. Bubbles in the chat. The boys was the only show I actually followed this year. Mm. There you go. I I will say I thought I, uh, season one was better yeah. than season two, um, but it's still one of the best shows. And it's uh, I mean, a lot of crazy stuff happens. Yeah. It it does definitely. You gives never know you what's going to come every week. It's yeah. always something. And. It, yeah, because that's the thing. I'm always excited for each new episode. It wasn't as like fresh and as new as the season one feeling. Every episode mm. was just like, "Whoa, what is this show?" Season mm. two, kind of, you know, okay, I, 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 I maybe see where this is going, but uh, it, it was still, it was still a hell of a ride. Season yeah, two, yeah, it was good. It was good. I loved, I love watching it. I mean, I was looking for, I, it's one of the few shows during the year where I was genuinely looking forward to it. There we go. Bubbles in the chat is giving us the our due. Follow the boys because John watched it for the podcast. So you guys get credit for that. Boom. Okay, that's what we need. Where's the our money, Amazon? Bump. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bezos, <laughs> we want our money. Okay. Oh boy. But yeah. So the boys, Mandalorian, Better Call Saul, top three shows on this list. Mm. Some shows that just missed the cut. Bojack Horseman. Fargo, mm. Saturday mm. Night Live, The Crown. Okay. Those are some things there. And then we got some multiple write-ins. Great British, great British Bake Off. Uh, that's a tongue twister. <laughs> and then Star Trek Discovery. There's some love for okay. that as well. Interesting. Uh, what do you guys have on, on the returning side of television? What were you liking this year, Kyle? Uh, what We Do in the Shadows yeah. is probably one of the funniest comedies um, on TV right now. And just some of the things that they do uh, is great. I love the, those characters. Um, uh, and overall, it's it's really, really well done. It's very, very funny. Uh, the writing is gets better, uh, I think, over time. Uh, so that's one of mine. 
Um, I like the crown as well. I did like the crown, even though I was kind of hard on it the first episode. There's something about it. Something about that royal family. I got to keep watching. Uh, and they do a great, it's, it's well directed that show. Um, so I like that a lot. Uh, Rami. Rami's on my list. Rami is really, really good too. You got to watch Rami. If you're not watching Rami, you got to check it out. Uh, and I liked watching Rami cause not only, uh, is there drama, there's comedy. I'm learning something about a culture that I have no idea about, uh, because I wasn't exposed to it when I was younger. So it's a little bit of a, it has a little bit of everything in there. Um, uh, yeah, there's a lot of good returning shows. Yeah. Um, but I would say those are probably, I'm still chugging through Fargo. I'm still yeah, chugging. Yeah, I, I, I dropped. I, I mean, maybe oh, if you guys no. tell me those last three or four are good. I just got to like episode six and then it's, they, they piled up on the DVR and then it's just like, I don't know. I, I, there's too much to follow, too much going on. It just wasn't hooking me mm-hmm. the fourth season. But uh, the shows that were hooking me, obviously, Saul, as you mentioned, Rami, one, one of my favorites of the year. Uh, could be the last season for the show. Who knows if the pandemic keeps affecting filming of it. Survivor, season 40, mm-hmm. Winners at War, the big Winners at War season. I was glad to see there was multiple votes. I think it got in the double digits on this survey as well. For that for that season it was just gameplay to the extreme with a lot of returning favorites definitely enjoyed that season J- john anything for the year stick out to you um boys and saul are the two bright stars i think for me uh, i think the only other show that i really watched um semi-religiously isn't even out in america it's uh called mm. taskmaster a uh, game mm. show from uh, uh uh across the sea but uh yeah those two are the two big ones that i think um take the cake for me all right, well, that's returning TV. Let's move now to new series. These shows premiered this year. Last year, Chernobyl also won this category too. A lot of Chernobyl love last year. Mm. Could you uh, hang on? Yeah. Could you imagine Chernobyl in this pandemic Past. this year? Oh my oh. God! Would have been brutal. Oh. No. No thanks. <laughs> no like thanks. Nightmare to nightmare every night. Um. This category is the one that it is bonkers to me. The the ones that people chose are. Mm-hmm. I have a feeling just by your reaction, what one of them is. Okay, what is it? Uh, Amelie in Paris. No, no, that's. Oh make... my god, that's what I was expecting. No. Um. All right. Let's see. Uh. I will say first. Uh. Perry Mason just missed the cut by a vote. Just okay. missed it. it was, this was, this category was the closest of the four categories. It was really close between these. Could have felt any which way but number three on the list we discussed it in episode 295 space force silence space force? silence for space force space force i'm not punking you this is real space force okay well we can't get them all can we <laughs> yeah i mean uh, i it wasn't for me uh it wasn't for me i mean you guys made it further than i did right you i, I watched episode bit. two <laughs> that's as far as oh. i got <laughs> <laughs> yeah no no, it just yeah, I couldn't even make just it that wasn't far. funny. It just you have yeah. an ensemble cast of Steve Carell, Ben Schwartz, John Malkovich, so many different players in this. You have Greg Daniels coming back, reteaming, for, you know, from the office with Steve, working on this premise that's so far fetched that was a joke to begin with, and it just didn't work at all. It just didn't click. It just it was odd. It just and it's not just us three. I mean. I saw it on on some year end lists, mm-hmm. but on the year end worst list on TV line, mm-hmm. it was number three for worst film or worst show of the year. I mean, it just it was lacking yeah. something. It, it was lacking a lot of things. It was lacking Steve humor. Carell. Yeah, <laughs> Steve Carell's character was just too put on. Um, yeah, and uh, I just remember a lot of the jokes. I'm like, really? This is what you went for? This is like the lowest hanging fruit. And there's so much more you could do with this. And it just, I don't know. It didn't feel like there was a lot of substance there. Yeah. I agree. Uh, it is going to come back for season two. They're doing some changes behind the scenes. I believe it. they're moving it to Vancouver, one, to make it, I guess, a cheaper production because it's a very expensive production, probably with the ensemble cast and the CGI and the sets and all that kind of stuff that they're they're dealing with with Space Force. But I think all three of us are not going to be watching season two. No, I well, I mean, we can probably 
tell why it got renewed because the cast is so huge. I can't. But if this thing is a money pit and well, I think the it audience was, isn't there, I, I almost know. would be positive if it got renewed for either two things. One, it was already going in two season commitment, yeah. or two, we don't want to lose Steve Carell. We don't want like we're just gonna yeah. give him this and tell hey Steve. Sorry, this didn't work out. We gave it a chance, two seasons. It just, it just wasn't, mm. you know. But yeah. All right. Um, number two on the list is actually one I agree with, and I wish it got a little bit more up on the mm. list. We discussed it in two eighty four, and it's Dave. Yeah. Dave yeah. FXX. Mm-hmm. I, uh, I, I remember. I wasn't. I don't think I was feeling it when we originally watched it, and then you told me to kind of keep up with it. And it it does pay off. It does pay off. It's really, really well done. Yeah. At first, I'm like, uh, is this show going to be for me? Like, it just it just didn't f- at first feel it. And then because, you know, you know, little Dickie's a character, you know, you got to mm. yeah, if you're if you're not vibing with it, you're not going to like it. But I, I kept with it. And as it went, it just got better and better to me and kind of hit that like Atlanta FX spot a little bit. Mm-hmm. There's some funny episodes, but then there's also some like powerful deep episodes. There was one dealing with like mental health. It's mm-hmm. just you have that, and then the next week it's like, oh, we're gonna deal with those like sex legs that he has in yeah. his like, <laughs> Oh my god, dude. Yeah. You never know what's coming on Dave. <laughs> but uh John, I can't remember. What did you think of Dave when we talked we talked about it way back when? I didn't like the first episode, mm. but I think I liked the second episode more. I just never, mm. I just never kept up with mm-hmm. it. Um, but I, I, from hearing what people have said, I think I probably would have liked it if I had kept going. But it was just a little bit too much of a rocky start, and and it, I, it does didn't. have a, a particular type of humor. Uh, so I mean, you just got to be prepared for that. But there is some other elements to it, and that's what I like about FX comedies. It's like it's a little multifaceted. It's not just uh, you know yeah. the typical thing that you're going to get on some other channels. And always pushing envelopes. Uh, let's see here. Our our final show, the number one pick here. I don't think any of you guys are going to guess it, but Kyle, give it a shot. Pick pick a show that you think made the number one list on the new series. Uh, From what we have here. Yeah. Um, I mean, I know what mine are, but I uh, yeah. maybe, hang on, have a thought. Give me one Where name. Is Where is it? Oh, I don't see it here. Okay, no, it's on the other list. It's on the other one. It's on I don't the other know. List. I don't know, man. I don't know. We discussed it. John and I did on episode 281. Mythic Quest Raven's Banquet. You guys were cheating on me? That's what I get from this. <laughs> hey, I don't know what you were doing. You're your grandma's bar mitzvah or whatever you go off and do. <laughs> um, yeah. I don't know J- John, how this happened. John, how did it? I didn't know anything on Apple TV Plus was this popular. Did it? Did it? take a u-turn somewhere and 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 start getting better because i personally didn't really enjoy it so i'm i'm, I'm very yeah. surprised i mean i went in with with high expectations just because of rob McElhenney. i i'm a big always mm-hmm. sunny fan uh you know the cast was pretty good they got danny pooty from community some some other folks you may recognize as well and i i only saw the premiere it sounded like it got better as it went on and there was they had a like a pretty buzzy kind of COVID episode. They did like a at home episode. It was one of the first shows like in March and April to do like a Zoom quarantine episode. They got a lot of buzz. So uh, I just yeah I just I didn't fully connect with it. Again, I feel like there was a lot of potential there, kind of like Space Force. I'd say I liked it better than Space Force, but it just I feel like it could have done more. And maybe just because I only saw the first episode, there there was more to come. But, I think I think I saw two if I'm remembering yeah. correctly, and and uh, I don't know. Uh, mm, mm, it didn't grab mm. me in those two episodes, so I I can't fairly say that it doesn't get better. Um, mm. but from those two, I would not have it would not have been this high for me. Yeah. Um, I will say the show I'm surprised didn't do that well on this list is another Apple TV Plus show. Uh, the, it I mean it did it did well. It, it just missed the cut, but Ted Lasso. Yeah, I mean that. I mean that was a buzzy show. Yeah, I mean I I like Ted Lasso. I mean it's very very wholesome, um, and for the COVID era, it's kind of the elixir I needed. Uh, there wasn't 
there wasn't, uh, I don't know. It just brought up your spirits a little bit. And it was something easy to watch. It, it made you feel good. Uh, I had that English culture that I like. So uh, I talked about soccer, which I liked. I liked Jason Sudeikis. It just had a lot of things working for me. Um, and there's some cliche things. There's some beats that you see a mile away. It's not reinventing the wheel, but for, you know, those bleak, months where you're like what is going on it was definitely the an easy watch that i recommend because yeah. it's there there is some substance there there is something to take away from it yeah i just yeah i, I would have thought that would have made the list especially because it got really popular towards the end in september october uh mm-hmm. but i guess it didn't didn't fully get on the list just missed the cut along with lovecraft country uh, the Circle and I May Destroy mm. You, um, which that mm. was a, that was a hard one to, to place because there's talks mm. that she may do another season, so we I put it in the new series one, but it could be a mini series, so it's that was a hard one to. I will say I May Destroy You might be my favorite show of the entire wow. of the entire year. Wow. Uh, I I uh, binged it pretty much. Uh, Right until I caught up on, towards the end, maybe the tenth episode or something around in there. But um, but yeah, it's really really well done. The characters, uh, there's a lot to it. Um, the messaging, it's just so like, oh, it's so good. Yeah. It's so so well done. I like it a lot. Yeah. Uh, let's see. For me on the list, uh, God Dave. Uh, I really mm. like the circle. Uh, and then How To with John Wilson. Mm. Uh, I'm glad it got renewed for season two. It's just, it's, mm. it's such a odd show. You know, it's a little bit of Nathan for you, but it also has like, oh, this is life in New York pre-pandemic. And then the final episode of the season when the timing kind of got close with the pandemic and we slowly see the pandemic enter the show. It, it was it actually became a very sentimental, reminding me a little bit of the Finding Francis finale of Nathan for you and so I'm mm. excited to see where season two can go, especially when they're going to be filming and when, you know, what they're going to be showing of New York. Yeah. Uh, but John, any shows on the new side of things that stand out to you? I think it was a little rough for me this year. I don't know if I can really place anything that jumped out that to me that goes, oh, yeah, I really enjoyed that. You know, uh, maybe maybe if I looked looked back real hard and, and looked at what I watched this year, I might be able to find it. But off the top of my head, mm, I don't think I have anything that I'm just like, yeah, you know. Yeah, I, I hear you. Uh, maybe something in miniseries. Miniseries, I think, had a great year uh, for, for yeah. shows. There were so many to choose from. I, I, could, I had to cap it at 20 because there were so many miniseries this year. Uh, before I reveal them, Kyle, which ones do you think made the top three for miniseries of the year? Miniseries of the year. Well, in sheer popularity, I could see Tiger King getting mm. on there, but I don't know if it's worthy enough to be on there. Could see the Queen's Gambit recency bias with that very very popular. Um, the Last Dance was very popular when it came out, but it it depends on the type of audience that watches that. Um, this is tough. There's a lot of good ones. I could see Little Fires Everywhere that was popular hmm. amongst a certain set, um, or even Mrs. America too. All right, all right. It's a lot uh, of a lot of contenders. Yeah, I'll I'll start off with one that just missed the cut that that hurt me. Uh, even though I'm not a sports fan, The Last Dance just missed yes. the cut. Uh, Very well. Sorry, done. Jordan. He, what is it? What's the thing? Oh, I, yeah. I took it personally. <laughs> yeah. he's coming back yeah. for us. And I took it personally. Yes, yes. he's coming for us. Oh, <laughs> um, yeah. It's just I, I, I don't know if it's just because it was, it was so long ago. But man, those those memes every week. Every week, I was excited to see what was going on. They were doing two episodes a week. It was right around when quarantine was starting up. I was, I was really into the last dance, even mm-hmm. as a non-sports fan. We get the, the, the Jordan jamming out yeah. tweets. That yeah. was a pop culture hotspot yeah. for a second. Yeah. But the show that beat it in the third spot here, we discuss it. Episode three fourteen: the haunting of Bly Manor. Mm. Uh, what did you think of that pick Kyle? I mean, I like it. I, I I went right through that show. I I really like both the Haunting of Hill House and the Haunting of Bly Manor. Um, uh, yeah, I think the characters are well done. It you, Dave, you and I talked about how it's more like a 
it's not really a horror uh, show after a while. It's more a show about love mm-hmm. and, you know, how people connect and all these kinds of things. So uh, there's a lot of messaging behind it. It, it. it If you just think it's a horror show or, or a scary show, mm-hmm. I think you're going to be disappointed. There's much. It's deeper than many that. more there's layers to it. going on. Yeah. Yeah, it definitely is like more of a love story. I, I, I liked the show. I was into the show. I, I binged that show i feel like it's not as buzzy as season one i feel like season one that really kind of yeah. caught on and it was with us for a while but like season one freaked me out a lot of netflix shows i feel like it comes in hot and then two weeks later never existed <laughs> yeah, yeah it's yeah. gone um can't say the same about the next show because <laughs> it came out on netflix <laughs> and we're still hearing about it and we'll be hearing about it for many years to come tiger king Murder, yeah. mayhem, and madness. Yeah, this was the pop culture moment of the year. I think if we like, yeah, the mm-hmm. the Tiger King hysteria, the Carol Baskin became a household name. Mm-hmm. I'm dancing with the stars. <laughs> you know, it's just like <laughs> it came out at the perfect time when mm-hmm. the pandemic hit. It yeah. just was the stars aligned, and it just made it like a juggernaut. Uh, John, were you sucked into Tiger King? Yeah, I mean, at that point, I was. Um spending you know eight to ten hours a day making protective equipment for the hospital where i work so i was looking for things to do and and you know operating a laser cutter with one hand and watching watching uh uh you know tiger king with the other you know so um i i enjoyed it i watched it quick and i i think i i rode the hype wave with everyone else it was pretty good yeah plenty of different characters just moments it's just memes everything with this yeah, and it really did feel like a pop culture like awakening. Dave and I were just talking about how things feel so disjointed now, but it seemed like everybody was watching the show. It was everywhere. The memes are still coming. Uh, you still see them cycling around every now and again, but the memes, uh, we can talk about, I don't know if it's the most well-made documentary, but by god this the director got lucky with the characters that were given to him and it's like they i good on him if he found all these people but if he just found the story and like all of these characters fell into his lap it's like these are the most insane people that you could find you, you can't make this thing up and uh hollywood is not done with it that's for sure there's multiple series to come and i'm gonna just list a few that i saw and we discussed a few on the podcast, but uh, there's one from Universal with uh, Kate McKinnon as Carol Baskin. There's another one from Ryan Murphy with Rob Lowe as Joe Exotic for Netflix. It's kind of weird. They're going to have a fiction version of the show on side by side with the documentary version. Yeah. Uh, there's one from Imagine with Nicolas Cage as Joe Exotic for Amazon. Any of these three you're looking forward to? I just want to see how crazy they're going to be. Yeah, Yeah. I'm interested to see uh, kind of how the direction they go in. And I don't know. It'll be interesting their take on it. But it's still like it's going to be overkill. Yeah, Yeah, especially because it's like we're going to be so far from it when these shows actually Mm. get going because of the pandemic, but also just shooting. It's like, oh, we're going to get these in 2022. Are people really going to care as much then? Yeah, Um, but the perfect storm of of you know uh, the pandemic starting and this coming out and all that and and it really did help ease people into the transition you know from normal life to the the you know quarantine and all that but uh, it's not going to be the same in in two years i i can't imagine they're going to do anything besides be things to laugh at you know at, at how yeah. how how weird nick cage looks doing his thing you know like i don't know yeah uh, can't they all just combine can we just have okay kate mckinnon for carol baskin nicholas cage joe exotic Rob Lowe is somebody else, you know, the the guy that takes over the thing. Just put all these people mm. together. Mm. Make one show. Call it a day. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Another show. Another Netflix show here. Three Netflix shows in a row. The Queen's Gambit, number one on the list. Biggest vote getter of the entire survey. Got the wow. most votes. Wow. Um, That's got to be a recency thing. It's very, very popular at the yeah. moment. Yeah, we discussed it last week on the podcast. We had to go back because it's so popular uh, huge ratings for Netflix. It drove chess interest way up. Um, really, really, really worried that Netflix is seeing these numbers and they're like, well, mm. we got to do a sequel. Yeah. It's no, no, 
Yeah. Don't, you know, it's just... Just it's, let this one be. Yeah. Just let it be. But I was into it. I definitely binged it real quick. Um, they, they just, they, it's just, they made it exciting. It was, it's a closed ended story, seven episodes. You're in, you're out. You're taking a game that's really internal and you're making it external with, with the montages and the editing and just the different effects. Um, I, I think it's, I think it's well done and you know, it's all you can ask for, especially in a pandemic mm-hmm. beginning, middle and end boom. But I know you watched the first one, John. The first episode. Did you, you gonna keep up with it? Have you caught up I, anymore? I watched half of the second one and got interrupted. I think by the podcast last week. Maybe maybe we'll see else. But mm. um, I I intend to finish it. I just haven't gotten to the point where I've actually sat down and done it. But I, I do intend to finish it. Yeah. Okay. And then Kyle, what about you? Have you watched any more? Yeah, I'm through four episodes so far. So I'm more than halfway through. Working my way through. All right. Yeah. Some episodes are long, like one was an hour and eight minutes. And some are long, and then I think other ones are like thirty minutes or thirty-eight yeah. minutes, and so it's like it all evens out a little bit. But mm. yeah, everyone. I mean, some big films or big miniseries: Tiger King, Queen's Gambit. There was a lot of big stuff in miniseries this year. Some ones that just missed the cut, as I mentioned, Last Dance, The Undoing, just missed the cut. Uh, we had some multiple. Let's see. Actually, we didn't have any multiple write-ins. Uh, we got. Uh, one vote for Grant. Remember Grant, that show that the Quibi executive liked? Yeah. So I'm yeah. wondering if she's voting in this one. <laughs> I don't know who else is watching Grant. <laughs> she heard. She heard the news. Um, we did get some, uh, we got one zero vote getter here, the Comey rule. Mm. Uh, people weren't feeling that. And we got one vote, close to zero votes, one vote for Little Fires Everywhere. And then Brave New World, which I guess technically makes the cut of, as a mini series because... Well, it was a series yeah. that got cut. So yeah, <laughs> so yeah. yeah. Um, I just have to say, it's a shame that the uh, that normal people didn't get anything. Yeah. Uh, I love that show. I it was one of the tops for me for the year. I mean, I I went right through it. Um, and it's man, does it kill you? It hurts right here, but uh, it's. It's worth it. I think it's one of the best shows of the year, Normal People. Yeah. Normal People. See, on my list, I have uh, The Last Dance, of course, The Queen's Gambit, and Tiger King. Uh, it's, you know, those are those are pretty obvious three. John, any stand out to you? Uh, Queen's Gambit was good for what I've seen so far, and yeah, Tiger King. I think those were the, the highlights for me. All right. That's it for television. We have one more thing to talk about, and that is pop culture moments. Now, I kind of skipped it this year normally i have a list of things uh to choose from just to give you some ideas of past winners 2015 was was uh he who must not be named running for president uh 2016 uh the impression of that man by alec baldwin Mm. uh 2017 was uh harvey weinstein and everything going on with me too in hollywood Mm. 2018 tide pod challenge and Fortnite takeover and then last year was the game of thrones final season hysteria between the coffee cup and the backlash of the finale everything with game of thrones mm. mm-hmm. this year though i mean i feel like the, the top story covid19 i mean there's not there's nothing around it. it's yeah. covid19 and how it affected hollywood and the entire world i mean mm. we we started in i think it was 283 we did an in and out point about uh corona beer and the whole pr issue that they were facing and we were kind of you know, it was just like an in and out point. It was like a five minute thing, eh, whatever. Yeah. After that episode, I don't know if a week went by that we didn't have an in and out point story or something related to the pandemic mm-hmm. on the podcast. Every week there was something. So it's like, it has to be COVID. <laughs> yeah. This year, automatic win for <laughs> COVID. There but, were a lot of pop culture moments, though, just yeah. in general. Just- yeah. There was still some stuff, um, and I, I have some comments from from the survey. We can read through them here. What people said. I mean, we just mentioned it, but Tiger King. They got over six Whoa. comments. I mean, between Joe Joe Exotic phenomenon, the Carol Baskin memes. There was at least six people that wrote in for that. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was followed right behind with Baby Yoda and Ashoka from The Mandalorian, a new character that got you know just as many uh, write ins there. Mm-hmm uh running through uh i mentioned trump usually kind of gets some kind of spot in these pop culture moments no mention 
of him specifically, but we did get some politics adjacent ones. Uh, Yeezy 2020. Uh, okay. Biden sure. winning the U.S. election, okay. and somebody also mentioned four seasons total landscape landscaping <laughs> press conference. Yeah, remember that? that is, yeah, there's that, a lot. Uh, to me, another just moment for Rudy in his hat for 2020. I know, I know. the The one for me, just because I think it was just an experience that you and I both had, Dave, was the fly, the fly. landing on Mike Pence's head. I just could that not video, believe it. That video I have of you freaking out over that fly. <laughs> All the fame worthy. I could not. Could not. That thing was stuck in there. I thought that like was just was on our television. Like, oh, there's a fly just attracted to the light. Nope. It was not. Uh, let's see. Some other moments. Uh, there were some about all the, the wins, the award wins for Parasite in the Oscar win for Best Picture, plus a, mm-hmm. quote, well-deserved Emmy for Kendall Roy. I remember freaking out for... For Jeremy Strong winning his Emmy finally for Succession. Mm. Speaking of television, lots of TV talk, uh, including some spoilers from Ozark season three and Baby Yoda's real name in the comments. Thanks, guys. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I got one here. Quote: Thank God for streaming TV. Otherwise, I might have gone insane during the pandemic. And yeah, a lot of people wrote in with some of the stuff they've been watching. Um, Fleabag season two, La mm. Casa de Papel. Uh, Nicole Kidman's wig throughout the undoing <laughs> and then and then one person quote watched Glee three times this year which was pretty dope uh, oh, good for that person good for that's, that person I will say are you the same person going insane because <laughs> during the pandemic yeah. three times for Glee same, one and the same um, let's see I, I have some comments that were a little bit too personal for me I, I think you guys could have not had to say all everything but <laughs> This isn't therapy. You have yeah. to pay us if it's if it's for therapy. I, I asked, quote, any personal entertainment memories or moments from 2020 that would you that you would like to add? And one person wrote in, I haven't had sex since 2017, <laughs> May 29th in parentheses. <laughs> I love how he has the exact date. He clarified the date. Thank May you. 29th, 2017. I like how he's put 2017 and then he puts it's May 29th in parentheses. Yeah. But I also love, dude, this isn't a pandemic problem. <laughs> this isn't a 2020 problem. You got, this is a you you problem, got more man. problems, Is man. the streak yeah. still going? Like, I mean, <laughs> did you hit it in 2020 and then it's been 2017? Like, what? I don't know, man. But we, we like to learn about our listeners. And <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Just remember, I charge by the yeah. hour when it comes to therapy. Yeah. Any other moments from the year you guys remember that you want to shout out from 2020 pop culture moments anything stick out to you guys tiger king the rudy giuliani stuff was a a fiasco the pen mike pence fly kobe bryant dying was Mm. insane oh man Man, 2020 was a rough year for For, like people dying it was insane i mean chadwick boseman alex trebek naya rivera uh, I mean, the, the list oh, goes yeah. on and on. Ruth Bader Ginsburg, so many people mm. taken rough yeah. year, rough year. Yeah. But, um, trying to think of anything else offhand. Yeah. yeah, no, those are the kind of the ones that stick out. But yeah, so, yeah, I mean, despite COVID, still a lot of pop culture moments, even though kind of it put a, a damper on a lot of movies and television shows from the year. But yeah, I, I had to put it as the number one, automatic number one spot because... Yeah, everything, everything yeah. got affected Revol- by that. Yeah, everything revolves mm-hmm. around it. I mean, we're still dealing with yeah. it. Yeah, it might be winning 2021. Hopefully not. <laughs> Hopefully not. But, uh, well, that is it. That is 2020 in a nutshell. That was it. And we are now going to take a little bit of a break. We're not live again until January. Uh, January 5th is when we'll be back to our normal Tuesday at 8 p.m. Twitch t- time slot. But we still have lots to promote in the next couple weeks. Um, first, we visited our friends at The Good, The Bad, and The Watchable to draft our favorite holiday movies. Uh, by the time you're probably listening to this in your podcast feed, it'll probably be in their podcast feed, The Good, The Bad, and The Watchable. A lot of fun talking about holiday movies with them. Plus, if you like holiday movies, we've done two full recaps of some holiday movies, and they're in our feeds. This year, we did... 
Home Alone, but we also did Die Hard. Uh, that's a holiday movie. We decided that. Spoiler from, from last night when we were talking about with the GBW guys. Die Hard is a Christmas movie, and we discussed it. So you can listen to that recap. And then finally, make sure you're subscribing to us on iTunes because while we're done with live shows until 2021, we're going to have two mini episodes coming before year's end only in your podcast feed. So you got to be subscribed to us on iTunes or on Spotify to get those bonus episodes. Uh, again, you can find episodes of the podcast on YouTube, iTunes, Spotify, the blog, doerdonsey.com. And of course, we are live Tuesday nights starting January 5th on Twitch, twitch.tv slash doerdonsey. Uh, really a lot of fun. I mean, we had, let's see, I'm just going to give some shout outs to people in the chat tonight. Bubbles. Uh, we had Freya and a new a new name here. I'm going to mispronounce it for sure. Zen Zendabi, is that it, John? Sounds good. Uh, so, so yeah, yeah. For a second, I thought you were going to say Zendaya, and I was like, hey. <laughs> could be, could be. Um, so yeah, uh, make sure you're following us on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram. Our new Instagram for 2020, at Door Redundancy. We got show clips and everything going on there. And I got to thank both of you guys for... Not only joining me tonight, but doing this for the entire year with me. I believe, by my count, if I counted correctly, we have done 49 podcasts in 2020. Wow. Wow. Kyle missed a few because he had a he was big timing us, but he yep. was there for most of them. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, that I was really... I was auditioning for the better podcast mm, that, that mm. week. <laughs> mm. But yeah, uh, couldn't do it without both of you guys and for john for putting this episode together getting it up on itunes and of course directing the twitch stream i couldn't do it without you guys thank you so much german all right well until next time until 2021 i'm david allen i'm john berwin and i'm cobberger and that's all we got for door goodbye everybody